Hi everybody, Matthew Turnage here. Well, it's been a while since I've updated everybody on my exploration of Bob Dylan's catalog, so I'm overdue. Um, I did slow down a little bit on buying some Dylan stuff lately, just getting some other stuff and different things going on. Uh, but I uh, wanted to do a quick update on where I am now. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous uh, three videos, I think it, I think it is, um, just to give you an update, uh, of course, I've always been familiar with Dylan's music, known a lot of his songs through other artists covering it and things, but I didn't really like his voice that much, and so I never really listened to much of his own stuff. I uh, decided almost a year ago now that I was going to give it a fair shake and just decided to just, you know, see his progression. So I started with the very first album and have been making my way through, uh, although also picking up some bootleg series here and there, um, particularly ones that have uh, been related to the time periods that I've been exploring in his regular album. So I left off with um, uh, Nashville Skyline was the last one, so I'll pick up from there, but before I go through the uh, main sequence of albums, again, there is another bootleg series that I uh, picked up. Uh, this one is volume oh, volume nine. It's very small on the print, but it's uh, the Whitmark demos, 1962 to 1964. So uh, obviously uh, I've kind of, as far as exploring the albums, I've moved well past these uh, early albums, but I'll, I do like a lot of that stuff. And um, and I thought this would be a good one to have to hear some of those songs in their raw form. You know, it's uh, very stripped down demos. Um, uh, a lot of them are very short. Of course, a lot of the well-known songs are on here, but also uh, some that he never uh, uh, really did much with on his own. But it's uh, it's a good collection. It's a very interesting collection from an, from an historical point of view. But in terms of uh, something that's a great listening experience on its own, um, it didn't really do a lot for me. Glad I have it. I'll probably check it out uh, again, you know, every once in a while, but it's not gonna be something I return to regularly. But like I said, glad to have it. It's an interesting listen from a historical point of view, uh, but it's, it's not gonna rank up there with my favorites of the bootleg series that I've gotten so far. Um, all right, so on to the, uh, the main album sequence and the ones that I've gotten this time. So, uh, like I said, left off with Nashville Skyline, so the next up is Self Portrait. This was an album I was really sort of looking forward to in a way just because it had such a reputation. It's got that uh, uh, infamous uh, Rolling Stone interview. Um, it's widely been panned. I saw once that it was on a list of, like, um, the three worst rock and roll albums ever made. Um, but uh, but I tell you, I really enjoyed this album. Uh, I don't love this album, but I do like it. Um, if I were ranking all his albums that I've heard up to this point, this would actually probably be at the bottom or near it, just because I like all the other ones so much more. But, but on its own merits, I think it's a very enjoyable listen. It's a, it's, a bit all over the place, and I think that's kind of what Dylan wanted. It seems to me that as he was trying to move on from this whole voice of a generation thing that he, uh, based on what I've read, he, he really did not like that. And so this is a bit of a curveball uh, to, to throw to the public to sort of maybe in some sense to, I don't want to say he was trying to undermine his own reputation, but it, I think what he was trying to tell people is that uh, uh you don't get to define who I am. I can be whatever I want to be. So it's it's primarily covers on this. This there there are a few originals. There's also some live tracks from his Isle of Wight performance, and uh, and like I said, it's just a bit over the place. Even the covers, some of them are traditional folk songs. Some of them are more modern songs. But uh, the album kicks off with uh, with all the tired horses, which is is one of my favorites on the album. But again the way he starts the album, choosing that song is the first one where he doesn't sing anything. Um, there are very few lyrics. It's just really two lines that are repeated over again. And it's, uh, you got a female chorus singing it, you know, it really is, uh, it's a bit of a curveball to, to start the album off with. And, um, and then throughout the album, there are a lot of tracks where he's using more of his Nashville skyline style singing voice. Um, the live tracks are interesting, you know. I I, I like the uh, the live version of Like a Rolling Stone. My favorite is on this album is uh, is that live version of uh, the Mighty Quinn. I think that's a great great version of that song. 
Um, uh, Gotta Travel On is another one of my favorites. But then, you know, uh, this also does, a, he also does a cover of uh, The Boxer on here by Simon and Garfunkel, which is really not good at all. Um, so it's, it is a bit of a mixed bag, but I do, I do, I've been listening to it several times uh, and I, I think there's really some merit to this album. It's a very interesting album, uh, especially taken in uh, the context of his, uh, his catalog. So, um, I've kind of been, uh, rambling on about it a bit, but, uh, uh, I like it. I'm interested in it. I don't love it, but, uh, but yeah, this is one I think I'm going to keep coming back to time and again, just because it's so different and interesting. Uh, so next up is uh, New Morning. Now this one I really enjoyed a lot too. Um, I tend to think of this as uh, Dylan's piano album, uh, at least the ones I've gotten so far. He, there's a lot of piano work on here from him. There are a lot more piano-based songs as opposed to guitar-based songs uh, compared to what he's done before. But I like that a lot. It, it gives it a little bit of a different flavor and uh, uh, several great songs on here, some really great songs on here. Um, uh, of course, it kicks off with If Not For You, which is a song I know very well from George Harrison's version and uh, and love George Harrison's version. Uh, I'm, I'm growing to like Dylan's version more and more, although I still prefer the George Harrison version. Uh, the other songs on here that I think are great are uh, Day of the Locusts, I like a lot. Um, Went to see the Gypsy. Winter Lude, that's kind of a fun little song, uh, If Dogs Run Free. The title track is great. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Father of Night at the end, I really like a lot. One More Weekend. There's a lot of really good songs on this one. This is a very solid album. It's, um, it's. Uh, I probably would say I would take this one over like Nashville Skyline, which I also enjoyed. But uh, I wouldn't put it quite on the track of, you know, my, my favorite Dylan albums like uh, Bring It All Back Home, Free Will and Bob Dylan, um, uh, John Wesley Harding. Th those are still kind of at the top for me, but, uh, but, but this one is a very strong album. I really have been enjoying this one a lot. And then the last one I've got to show you is uh, another compilation album, of course, uh, Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits Volume 2, which was sort of a stopgap uh, after... Um, after New Morning, Dylan took a while before he uh, released his next studio album. And so, of course, most of the songs on here are previously released songs from previous albums. And uh, if it was all previously released, I would have skipped it, but I decided to pick it up because uh, it's got uh, Watching the River Flow, which had been released as a, as a single and wasn't on any of the previous albums. That, that song I do uh, enjoy a lot. And then we've got um, a live version of uh, "Tomorrow Is a Long Time," which is which is a good track. And then we close out the uh, the collection with four uh, new previously unreleased songs, which are uh, which are all good. Of course, uh, a couple of them I knew because I, I did. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I did get uh, the two CD version of the bootleg series of uh, the Basement Tapes Raw. Uh, that had been recommended to me to listen to in between um, Blonde on Blonde and um, John Wesley Harding. And so uh, so I Shall Be Released and You Ain't Going Nowhere, he, he redoes uh, those for this collection. And, and they're good versions. I think I like the, the ones on the Basement Tapes are all a little bit better. But um, And Down in the Flood, the last song on here is really good. But the track on here, uh, When I Paint My Masterpiece, is really becoming one of my favorite Dylan songs, to be honest. I really enjoy that song a lot, so I'm really glad I got this collection to hear that song. Um, it's 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 a great tune. Um, so anyway, that's all I've gotten so far. Um, I will be getting, hopefully, be getting uh, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid before too long, and then moving on. So once I get another three or so of the uh, studio albums, I'll do an update. And uh, and probably we'll be getting at least a couple of more, uh, more of the bootleg series before then. I really want to get that uh, traveling through bootleg series. I may be getting that one here pretty soon. But that's that's what I think of the albums I've got so far. I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts on any of these, particularly Self Portrait and New Morning. And thanks for watching.